Welcome back. We're talking to Amy Lindy, a physical therapist with an emphasis on wound care. Thanks for joining us again, Amy. Yeah. So I remember back when pressure ulcers used to be very common in nursing homes and very common among folks that had to sit for extended periods of time. And I don't think pressure injuries uh, are commonplace like that anymore and they are not to be expected. Can you talk about that and how we can prevent them? Yeah, you know, I think there wasn't enough understanding about what was going on inside our bodies that were increasing our risks um, for having these pressure injuries. You know, and as we have developed, you know, as a society and with medicine, we have started to research ways that we can keep our skin healthier. Can you give us some examples of what we might be doing to make our skin healthier? Yeah, so staying hydrated is very, very important. Our, um, our skin is just like anything else in our body. It's made mostly of water, and when our skin isn't hydrated, is in, isn't properly functioning, um, people can um, change lifestyle habits like quitting smoking. That will improve blood flow, oxygen to tissues, um, and also that helps keeping hydrated. Um, we need to keep our, our skin clean and dry. Moisture can um, definitely um, change the integrity of our skin, and so if we can keep that integrity by keeping it dry and clean, then um, we can definitely reduce those risks. Um, nutrition is a huge portion, and there has been a lot of gains in you know, ways to supplement nutrition over the years that has been helpful. But um, diets that are, you know, full of proteins, um, vegetables, fruits, um, you know, whole grains for those that have good appetites. But also, you know, if people don't have a good appetite, providing them with some kind of nutritional supplement like a booster and sure can really help increase the calories and, you know, the micronutrients that our skin needs. Are there some medical conditions that might lead to pressure injuries? Yeah, so we touched a little bit about this earlier, but I would like to uh, discuss a little bit more about some of the cardiac and pulmonary conditions. So when we have medical conditions such as a heart attack or peripheral vascular disease, um, atrial fibrillation or COPD, our skin isn't getting the oxygen that it needs to sustain um, healthy cells, and so it's more likely to get broken down. What about the clothing that we wear? Can that lead to pressure injuries? Yeah, so any kind of clothing that is restrictive on the body or maybe has a large seam, um, zipper, buttons that can cause pressure from being sustained for a long period of time can definitely um, increase our risk for pressure injuries. So it's always important that if we, um, you know, if your loved one is in a hospital or a long-term care setting or just ill at the time, comfortable, loose-fitting clothing, such as sweats um, or even you know hospital gowns that can be changed frequently can definitely help reduce their risk for getting pressure injuries. What about medications? Are there certain medications that might lead one to incur a pressure injury? So there's not really a medication out there per se that will increase the risk, but any type of medication that increases how sedative we are, um, so heavy painkillers or sedatives that um, keep people from getting up and moving always can increase our risk of a pressure injury. What do you think the number one thing a person can do to prevent pressure injuries? The number one thing someone can do to reduce pressure injuries is get up and get moving. It's the, the constant need for our skin to get relieved of that pressure, whatever it may be. Um, they do recommend, you know, somewhere between one and two hours of repositioning if you are bedridden. And um, so if someone is bedridden, it's very important to move them as much as possible. But if you can get up and walk or just stand up for a little bit throughout the day, definitely improve your skin health. Well, unfortunately, some of us can't get up and walk because we're confined to a wheelchair for whatever reason. So for those folks that are, or for the caregivers, give us some tips on what the, we can do for folks in wheelchairs. Yeah, one of the main things for someone in a wheelchair, that, um, I think it's, it, passed up a lot is the need for a good cushion underneath. Um, sitting on the base of a wheelchair is an immediate risk for skin injuries. Um, there's a lot of cushions out there that are um, fairly in affordable for those that aren't in the wheelchair for long periods of time. 
folks that are in the wheelchair six to eight hours a day do need a substantial pressure relieving cushion and insurances do cover this for those that are in a wheelchair. But there is pressure relieving strategies when you're in a wheelchair and they really recommend to do every 30 minutes if possible. Mm -hmm. So um, the, one of the easiest ones for many to do is to lean forward and, you know, and, and release the pressure off of the tailbone in, in, the, in your bottom. So um, even just changing that position for 20, 30 seconds is enough to relieve that pressure. Um, there's also bending over to a side of a wheelchair and also those that have the upper body strength can push up with their arms and relieve that pressure underneath. Um, but there is um, therapists and doctors and all those people can provide support with helping caregivers and patients understand how often they need to and what might be the best strategy for them. In our remaining few seconds, can you talk about specialized equipment for folks that are bedridden? Yeah, so in long-term care facilities or hospitals, they are gonna have certain pressure relieving mattresses, um, but at home, if you don't have those, those things, pillows to you know, lift up heels, um, lay between the knees um, and the ankles if you're laying on your side can help quite greatly. But if you are bedridden, you're most likely on a service at home where those providers can bring some of that special equipment in for you. Okay, thanks for that great information, Amy. Up next, we're going to be talking about the treatment of pressure injuries. We'll be right back after this short break.